Okay, year seven. Um, I'm just going to give you a very quick demonstration on how I want you to draw the proportional picture of the fish. Proportions means getting everything right so the head's the right shape and size and it compares well to the size of the tail. We haven't got a crazy fish with a small head or a big eye. So I'm going to show you some techniques on making sure you've got your proportions right. Hopefully you remember some of these from when you've done your hand drawing. So the first thing is, um, you might have to work from the screen or you might be lucky enough to be able to have a printout of one of the fishes um, from the slide which you're going to be working from. I've printed mine out from my phone. It has come out really big, which is a bit troublesome, but it will show us how to use um, measuring quite well. Um, I'm going to just point the camera at the screen for a minute because some of you might have to use your screen now this is a bit crazy because it's infinity but you will have the PowerPoint this PowerPoint here this slide hopefully really big um, on the screen and so you will be able to do your measuring like this if need be and I'm going to talk you through the measuring but I am going to use the paper copy to do the measuring because it's just a bit less off-putting than you looking at the screen all the time with infinity hands on it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a pencil just to put some key marks up on our paper. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our screen to do measuring and we might use our pencil to do this or we might use our fingers and our thumbs. I'm always using my finger and my thumb, my pointy finger for this, but you can do it with your pencil if you want to and just put a thumb on like that so you know where you're measuring. So this is good for angles and proportions. So I'm going to look at the end of my fish's mouth here and where its gills are. So that size there, I can fit that size and I can jump to, to where the gill starts and I know that that's the same size as to the end of the fin. And I know that the angle is kind of pointing up a little bit. So now if I look at my page, I might want to change the size, um, but as long as I make it proportionally correct so that the head is, twi is the same size as where the fin goes, that's good. So I'm going to put a mark right on the end of my paper where the end of the fish's mouth is going to go. That's a bit dark. And then I'm going to think, right, measuring wise, I'm going to kind of go, I think, to about there for the fins. Okay. So one, two, I know that there is the fins start and where the gill is. And I know now that that's where the end of the fin goes. So I'm just mimicking that for you to the gill and then jumping across to the fin. Now I'm going to change it, same head size now here that I've made, jump across and I can put a mark where the end of the fin goes. And basically you do that all the time. So how many heads can I fit into my fish? Well I can fit one, two, I've gone off the page but I can get three heads into the actual fish body. One, two, three. So I'm going to put another little mark, you can't quite see it, I'll just move it up a bit there. You can put a little mark up there so you can see where the fish body's going. So I'm just going to come back now to its face. Right, so once we've got some marks in, the other thing is how wide is my fish? Well, from his mouth again to where his gill is and the fin starts, he's about the same width. So it's a bit awkward to show you. But there you go. So I don't want to make him too wide or too skinny. I've got to kind of put my hands back on and then I've got to bring it up and put two marks to measure him out there as well. And also I'm using my pencil on the screen or on my paper to look at some angles. So here's the angle of his head. So if I go up across here, I'm very lightly just bringing my pencil across. So here's his back and I'm drawing a line up here. So if I just now start to just move my camera a little bit so you can see. So I've started now to get some key lines in where he goes. And this is all just in pencil. And the other thing I need to do is I need to kind of think, where does his eye go? Well, his eye, if I was looking on the screen, I think his eye, I can get right into the middle of his eye from his mouth, jump up 
and that's again where the fin is so his eye is about halfway so I can get two eyes in that bit there so right in the middle so that's my middle dot so I now need to kind of draw I'm looking very closely now at my drawing or the screen I'm doing windscreen wiper eyes year seven you should hopefully remember those windscreen wiper eyes means you're looking more at the thing you're drawing than the actual piece of paper you're drawing on best artists always look at the thing they're drawing more than the piece of paper they're drawing on so I'm just kind of looking at my angles I'm getting all my angles lightly drawn in here there's a bit of dark there so I'm just putting a bit of a shape there round his eye he's got some dark areas there around his eye and there's a big bag under there and then under his mouth that's quite dark and his mouth comes quite down I think I've got the wrong angle there I'm going to get a rubber and I'm just going to make his mouth look a bit more like that ah that's a bit better right so the next thing is don't have lots of heavy dark outlines everywhere because fishes or, or creatures or objects don't have all those really dark outlines so I've now got a bit of a guide in pencil but now I need to start using my biro to make my mark making techniques now there's a slide in the PowerPoint to show you how to do this but very quickly because I want you to get cracking then I'm going to use my biro to start putting in where the fish eye is now there's a white area in this so I'm going to leave that blank I'm not going flat I'm swirling this because that eye is circular so I need to make sure that my eye also has got circular mark making in it and it's very dark in the middle so I'm going round, I'm just leaving a little bit of white where I can see there's a bit of white going there. So I've got the eye sorted now. It's getting darker. Now I've got a little bit of an eyelid around that's much lighter. But my mark making, I'm not pushing on as hard now. I'm kind of just going round the shape of the eye and creating some of those mark making techniques. I could do some dashes look. And the closer together I do the lines, the darker they will get. I can push on quite hard as well and create more tone and the other thing I can do is I can do cross hatching so on his nose here where it's getting darker I can cross things together more lines together go darker and darker and I can work round the shape of his mouth so I get quite a nice feeling I might want to do some stippling some dots or I might want to do some really controlled textural scribbling on him so I start to feel his fins and his, his sort of scales starting to be created as well. He needs a lot more work around his eye because it's much, much darker than I've got it around this eye at the moment. But inside the mouth, I just want to show you as well, you can really colour in and push on a bit harder to get a very dark area because in his mouth, actually, it's very dark just underneath here. And then it gets lighter, so I'm taking the pressure off and I'm just coming down a bit here so I kind of just wanted to get started he needs a lot more work but he's he started quite well so I just wanted to give you an indication of some of the mark making techniques you might want to use on this fish and it might be you spend a really detailed amount of time on just the head and a little bit of the body or you might be able to spend extra time on and really get some control drawing throughout the whole thing that's really up to you and your time but what I want from you really is a detailed windscreen wiper eye drawing of this fish okay and I hope that helps year seven Take care then, bye bye.